Hello everyone. So today I thought I would make some uh, expl some short explanation to a video I released maybe a year ago about a small project, which is a uh, video uh, a uh, visual servoing approach using OpenCV for uh, Crop Pro like uh, navigation. Uh, I released like just a uh, demo for the code and I didn't explain anything about it. So maybe thought. Uh, I would go through it and explain how it works. Okay, so this is the visualized output. This is how it looks like, but uh, mainly um, what I'm interested in is that th I have numeric output, which is the heading uh, angle error. The way this works is that I take the video, I uh, threshold it, so I extract on the details that I'm interested in, and uh, I do this filtering using the canny edge detection uh, algorithm. And then I select an ROI from this picture, mainly this way. Uh, there's a technique wh which is called uh, vanishing uh, point detection, which is the point where the two lines intersect. Uh, it could have uh, made the, uh, the algorithm more robust, but unfortunately the only video that I found had this uh, potter mark, which uh, as you can see destroys the, uh, the details of the image. So I ended up just cutting my uh, ROI or region of interest uh, at this height. So then uh, I mask out all the details uh, that I don't, that I'm not interested in, and I just keep uh, the, the the details within this region. So this is my region of interest, and then I do a transformation matrix to warp the perspective, and uh, this is this would be called uh, bird's eye perspective. So I warp the image as if I'm looking from uh, from on top, so that's why it's called the bird's eye, since birds look from uh, quasi vertically to the uh, plane. So, yeah, I end up with two lines as if I'm looking again from up uh, from on top of the uh, of the ridges. And after that, what I do is that I split the screen into because I know that my uh, my uh, my two lines are are uh, within the two halves of the screen so i split it into and then i do a histogram and of each half like and uh, the histograms would tell me where where are the uh, the points the white uh, white pixels located and this is like a quasi a pseudo uh, representation of the histograms so this this how the histogram would look like. I have two peaks, and these peaks represent where the uh, lines are more likely to to be located, and uh, the the peak, the singular like peak, on the left and on the right would would give me the x coordinates of the first window. So I'm talking about these windows. So this and this window were placed at the uh, at the x coordinates of these peaks so i put my first windows two windows on the left and the right and how i would do it is that uh any any pixel any white pixel within that window i get all these pixels i get the mean of the x values of all these pixels and that mean would be the uh, the x coordinate the center of the next window then the next window uh, is placed. Uh, it calculates the mean of all white pixels within the same window, within that window, to find the x coordinate of the same uh, of the next window, and it keeps on going until the maximum uh, number of windows that I uh, that I uh, specified within my code. And the same process happens on the left side and on the right side, and that that way. That's uh, how like it's named the sliding window because they slide, so they keep on going and building on top of each other. And uh, as you can see from the uh, blue one in here, uh, it's affected like the the placement of the window is affected by the uh, uh, the the uh, density of white pixels within the window. So. As you can see, we start in here, which is the median of all the white pixels. That's the histogram. And then 
we shift to the right because all the pixels in the first window are on the right side we shift to the right then we start shifting to the left as the density gets going to the left and then to the right so this is how I find uh, the all my windows and I specified uh, the maximum number of windows to be 10 but that's in the code that uh, you can uh, you can play around with that and then uh, we take all the points within the windows the left one and the right one we always like treat the left ones are as separate uh, windows and the right one as as separate windows uh, we take all the points and we do a poly polynomial interpolation and uh, what does that mean is that we find the line that approximates th we find the polynomial that ap approximates uh, the line or the function that passes through all these points and in my case I played around with uh, second degree and first degree polynomials so first degree polynomials are just lines and second degree polynomials are uh, parabolas and uh, what I found out is that a uh, a line works better for me but uh, and I'll talk a little bit about the inspiration uh, of uh, for this project and the inspiration they worked on the uh, lines the road uh, road lines and the road lines are curved as you as you might know so uh, so yeah in their case they used uh, second degree polynomials but that didn't work well for me so I I just went with the line so basically I just find the line that passes through these points uh, and that's my line that's uh, this gray one again one for the right one for the left and then what I do is that I apply my region of interest again uh, again since I'm just interested in the re uh, the area that's right in front of me I cut uh, the lines within this area and this is uh, the safe zone that I can navigate within but remember we're still in the warped space we're still working within the uh, bird's eye perspective space so we need to apply the inverse transformation matrix so what we have the matrix that take us from the real world from the uh, the view of the camera to the bird's eye perspective and now we do the inverse of that transformation to get back our uh, lines within the, within the real world so now we have our safe zone within the real world. The next thing that we do is that uh, I draw two, two horizontal lines and these lines are uh, like I've chosen these randomly, m not necessarily randomly, but they gave me the best results. And the first line, I the first horizontal line I draw and I find its center as, my, uh, as the location of the uh, robot or the camera. So uh, that's the center and then since the robot is heading uh, vertically so it's heading this way the red line uh, presents the uh, actual heading of the uh, robot since it's uh, it's vertical to, the, to that line and the black line is uh, is linking the uh, the middle of both white lines so I have two horizontal lines and I link the two middles and that's how I find where I should head as the robot so the, bl the black line is the ground truth and the red line is my heading angle or the robots heading angle and, and the using tr some basic trigonometry I e calculate the error or the angle between these two lines and that's my error that's my angle error and to better visualize uh, that way I, I put a uh, picture of, uh, of course, the, per the Mars rover, the Perseverance, and uh, as you can see, I imagine that my robot is looking straight ahead, but uh, the safe zones, like middle lines, tell me that I need to go the black, uh, the black arrow uh, way. So this is how much I need to correct my angle, and uh, yeah that's basically it as you can see uh, sometimes the the red and the uh, the black lines are right on top of each other and that's when we, do we don't need to correct but sometimes they drift from each other and that way we need to do a correction and basically that's what uh, what's visual surveying is
This is the GitHub repo for that uh, robot and uh, for that project, and this is the uh, GIF that you you've been seeing in the presentation. Uh, and yeah, the code is very simple. Uh, so we have a main script. If you want to uh, play around, like put a second degree polynomial, third degree, you can change it in here. If you get back in here, we have this cropline detector .py, which is the uh, Python file that has the uh, the class that has all the functionality as you can see here i state that it it is heavily based on this and uh, we'll talk about this project in a minute but uh, these are just visualization uh, bit masks if you want to, to google what a bit mask is but it's just like these are flags to what to visualize if you don't have don't want any visualization or if you want to visualize all the steps uh, you can you can use these yeah, and these are the percentages of like the width and the height that would specify the uh, bounding box or the bounding box of the uh, region of interest and DLBX is as you can see down left bound on the X axis I'm sorry I could have named these better but it is what it is it was uh, the decision that I took back when I wrote the uh, project so yeah so down left bo uh, bound on the X so uh, we have down left down right up right up left so we go like this this is the shape so down left down right up right up left uh, yeah and this is what I told you about the windows so the radius of the window is 15 pixels so the width of the window is 30 pixels and the number of the uh, windows is 10 stacked on top of each other and the minimum number of pixels within the window so the, nim the minimum number of pixels within of white pixels within a window to to take into consideration that window is 25 otherwise you just use the previous uh, the previous uh, like X coordinate so if a window has 25 or less white pixels it will just be identical to this uh, to the previous uh, window when it comes to the x axis and they just keep on stacking this is a great art article on how to find lanes it is actually the ultimate guide to real time lane detection using opencv so uh, so yeah just literally this m this was my basically my only uh, uh, reference to to do this project so yeah, I started from this one, it, it has a lot of code, you'll see a lot of similarity between my code and this code, and has all like the perspective warping, explanations and all, yeah, it's, it's a great article, read this before uh, reading my code and understand everything, the only thing is that I uh, decided to refactor this code, this code is not like class based so I decided to refactor it and make it into a class so uh, yeah it's a class but yeah it's not uh, yeah I don't know so uh, you might find my code a little harder to read but if you understand this you'll understand my code and uh, yeah that's it so uh, hope you enjoyed this video I hope you find it useful and uh, see you in the next one bye